So if we consider a material that has one plane of symmetry, so here we'll use the x1 So we'll use the x1, x2 plane as a symmetric plane. All right. So if it's a symmetric plane, then that symmetry requires that the elastic constants do not change uh, according to the following reflection. So I'm going to use the terminology of a rotation matrix, but it's not a proper rotation because it would result in a left-handed coordinate system. It's really a reflection, but that doesn't matter. Our, so if we wanted to see what the stress would be or how the stress would transform under this reflection, we can still use our same kind of equation where we have this. Okay, and if you compute that, then sigma prime, you know, so just plug in uh, a generic stress tensor, perform this reflection on it, and sigma prime is going to equal sigma one one, sigma one two, minus sigma three one, sigma two two minus sigma 2, 3, sigma 3, 3. And similar, similarly for a strain tensor that undergoes this reflection. So basically, they'd all be the same except sigma 3, 1 prime would equal sigma Three one negative and sigma two three prime equal negative sigma two three the rest are the same all right so with that if we then take these components and we put them back into this equation so plug plug our transform components in. And I'm just going to write out the, basically the sigma 1, 1 term. So then I'd have sigma prime 1, 1 is equal to C 1, 1, 1, 1, epsilon prime of 1, 1 plus C 1, 1, 2, 2. <laughs> And now, so that, that would be the, f the sigma 1, 1 prime component, according to that equation. And so now we're going to plug in the fact that we, you know, what we know, that some of these terms, you know, the relationships via the transformation, All right? So sigma prime 1, 1 is equal to sigma 1, 1.
So then we have minus 2 sigma 1, 1, 2, 3, sigma 2, 3, minus 2 sigma 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, plus 2c, 1, 1, 2, 1. Okay? So if the x1, x2 plane is a plane of symmetry, then these two equations should be equal. Right, so let's let's see if they are. I mean, you, you subtract. Well, I'm sorry. Not this equation shouldn't. These two equations shouldn't be equal. This, let's see. Get a different pen. This equation is the same as this equation, just with the transformations plugged in. Right, they're no different. Okay. What what this should equal would be the untransformed equation, right? So that would be sigma 1, 1, Okay, these two equations should be equal to one another if the x1, x2 plane is a plane of symmetry, okay? So if you just subtract one from the other, then what you result in So if you tr subtract the two equations from one another, you, you have this. And the, again, if that's a plane of symmetry, this should equal 0. And the only way that it can equal 0 is if these two constants are equal to 0. In general. Right? So. We can make similar arguments. I'm not even going to go th go through it all, but you can make similar arguments that will allow you to show that you know, if we just write out the rest of those equations. And what that leaves is a C matrix that has this form. And that is called a monoclinic material. And it has 13 independent constants. I had to count them to make sure. Yeah, 13. So if you have one plane of symmetry, you can reduce from 21 to 13. By the way, this is symmetric. Not zero, it's symmetric. 